Jill, you, know, you and I did a program here you know, five years ago, almost to the day, and we reviewed some of these issues. We're kind of updating today. We played a bunch of sound bites back then, and you sent me some sound bites, and I found some of my own. And it seems, as I said a minute ago, that the entertainment world is just saturated in this. And I want to play a few of these bites to illustrate that. And there are going to be a couple of names here. They're going to be pretty surprising to people. Even Bill O'Reilly fits in here. What I'd like to do is play this first clip. It's from ABC. It's their program 2020. And it's featuring the Long Island medium. Now, folks, this is an average woman who suddenly got some very above average powers. At least she thinks she does. And thousands of other people think she does as well, because the waiting list to see her is even two years long. Good evening. Halloween is just days away and your kids probably have their costumes and those jack-o'-lanterns are carved and leering. But for a lot of people, Halloween comes more than just one night a year. Whatever you call that whole range of sixth sense phenomena, spirits, guardian angels, premonitions, ESP, more than two thirds of Americans say they have felt those things that go bump in the night. And for some professional psychics, the dead don't just go bump, they pull up a chair and have have a conversation. They are the most profound of life's questions. What happens after we die? Is it ever possible to receive a message from a departed loved one or to read another person's mind? From poets to filmmakers. Molly? I can hear you. Everyone has struggled to find these answers. So are some of us actually able to speak to the dead? Teresa Caputo says yes. Oh, this dinner is going to be so good. Just last year, she was an unknown mother living in suburbia. Look at your madre, cooking at the old stove. -o. But today, that hair, those nails, and that unmistakable voice. Back off. No pressure. Stop it. But there's somebody else. There's are somebody recognized else. everywhere she goes. So, any vibes? I Fans hoping for a reading from America's newest megastar medium. Who was the young male that passed? Yep, my son. His Even son. with us in the parking lot of a local strip mall. Did you you hear him call your name at times? Yes. Like, Ma. Yes. It's not wishful thinking, know that it is him. Each week, Teresa captivates audiences, telling them she is communicating with the dead on her hit TLC show, Long Island Medium. I'm calling in my spirit guides. It's a higher level. Should we get, like, like a fruit basket for him. Her husband and children may poke fun at her gift. Everywhere we go, she's reading somebody. That's not true. That's Hi. Who's the mother or energy that passed? Did you lose both of your parents, your mother and your father? I feel like you lost someone very recently. But it's something Teresa says she's known about all her life. I don't mean to quote like Lady Gaga or anything, but I was born this way. But what about friends and acquaintances? I mean, did you tell them that you were seeing and hearing people who were dead? Well, that's when my trouble all started. <laughs> when I started sharing with my friends and they'd say, well, that's not normal. And then I shut down. Teresa says what she was seeing scared her and she grappled with debilitating anxiety until in her 20s when she finally sought help from this woman, a spiritual healer. She had told me that the reason for my anxiety was that spirit was trying to communicate with me. And you should therefore be open to it? What I had to do was just learn how to control and understand what it was that they were showing me. Of course, there is little scientific evidence to prove it's actually possible to talk to the dead. But that's never stopped those claiming to have a sixth sense from cashing in on this $2 billion a year industry. Want a session with Teresa? These days, you'll be waiting for more than two years. Well, that was the so-called Long Island medium. Got to wait two years even to get an appointment with her. Eric Barger, she's talking about spirit guides. What is a spirit guide? A spirit guide is demonic. It's very clear. People don't want to see it like that because they think demonic is only with pitchforks and horns and doing evil things. But spirit guides love to gain control or influence with people by uh, telling them something they want to hear or by looking so innocent. We should say right up front, too, that this whole 
whole idea of the rise of people wanting to understand the future or speak to the dead, those kind of things. Satan does not know the future. He cannot, does not understand the future, but he does understand humans and he understands how we operate. And uh, if he can just tell people what they want to hear, that will give them, at least some of them, that inroad will be then made that they'll want to know more and they'll get deeper yeah. and deeper involved. I want to play another sound bite in just a minute. And it's going to build on what you've just said, Eric, because I was online. I happened to catch a Dr. Phil program and he had psychic John Edwards on. And I think what stood out to me, Jill Martin Rishi, was the intense enthusiasm enthusiasm of the audience. They had melted the phone lines and the email lines asking Dr. Phil to have this psychic John Edwards on. And once he was on and they came onto the platform, they just went crazy because he clearly was their idol. Now, what's going on? I think it has to do once again with that strategy that Satan brings against us, which is to try to get people to play with what they have no power over. There is a void within the human heart. And when they reject God, that void remains open and empty. Mm. And they are searching for something to fill it. And they recognize that there is a real power in the occult. It's a lesser power. They do not know that. It's a lesser power of the created being, Satan. He's just a created being, not the creator. But they go after that power. They are longing for something, some kind of satisfaction, some kind of control over their lives. You know, I think it's important to say, too, that there's two sources of spiritual power in the universe. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the ultimate power is God and Satan, who has limited power. Any spiritual experience that's going on is coming from one of the two, and we have to discern which one. Mm -hmm. And one other thing, when you look at the, the questions that the psychics are asked, one that always comes up is, when am I I going to die? And I've said so often to audiences, who would want to know the answer to that? You would mark the calendar. You'd live your life according to when that last breath was going to be. It would drive you crazy. But yet that's a question that people want answered. Let's listen to this clip because you will hear the intense enthusiasm. Again, there seems to be an addiction to this kind of secret knowledge. I heard everything from Dr. Phil. We want him to interact with the audience more too. I'm begging you, please have him on again. Even the phone lines were going crazy in hopes of seeing this guy in action. The entire audience was sold out within minutes. So who am I talking about? None other than psychic medium John Edwards. Now here's how John explains his work. I'm a psychic medium. My specialty is connecting people with the other side. I'm being pulled into that section over there. I've got somebody who passed from lung cancer. It's my mom. They're making me feel like you're not going through that alone. When you say to someone, you know, your son's here, and you see them go, oh my God, this is real. It is just such an amazing feeling. Somebody back there has a son that's passed. I'm supposed to bring up the murky water. Why is he bringing up the murky water? Was he found there? He was lost there. OK. I, I just need to know your son's OK. Mediums are born, they're not created. If you're meant to do this work, this work chooses you, and it becomes your path. You had to take him off life support? Yeah. Okay, and did you argue with someone and say, this is not what he wanted? I screamed out he's not supposed to die like this. People always ask me, is this a gift or is it a curse? It's an ability that I have, and I'd say that I have had this ability my entire life. Jill, what were we hearing there? We're hearing channeling. This is actually someone who says or thinks that he can give information. And often he does give correct information, but a lot of other times he gives incorrect information. What he's doing is hearing a voice from another dimension. He's got the door cracked open to the dimension of darkness. And he is getting his information from something that has nothing to do with God, from a demonic informant. This is channeling a lot of times it comes through mediums like this a lot of times it comes through writings it is a way to connect with Satan and his world. Jan, you know, whether um, the psychic is giving correct information or not, the idea that people are looking for it in this, mm -hmm. in this place is the problem. We go back to uh, King Saul going to the witch at Endor back in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the psychics are giving correct information. And people say, well, it, it must be something that I need to have because they told me something that was correct. And I go, well, you know, Satan is a great guesser and he does know history. He can look back and certainly uh, psychic 
like it can be directed by his spirit guide, that is, i.e. demon, to say something to someone that would be meaningful to them. But again, he can't look forward. He can only guess at the future. He can only guess at the future.